I mean, LSTM is, is one of the great examples of architectures that uh, do something beyond just deeper and deeper networks. Uh, there's clever mechanisms for filtering data, for remembering and forgetting. So do you think that that kind of thinking is necessary? If you think about LSTMs as a leap, a big leap forward over traditional vanilla RNNs, what do you think is the next leap hmm. within this context? So yeah. LCM is a very clever improvement, but LCMs still don't have the same kind of ability to see far back in the future, in the in the past, as us humans do. The credit assignment problem across way back, hmm. not just fifty time steps or hundred or a thousand, but millions and billions. It's not clear what are the practical limits of the LSTM when it comes to mm -hmm. looking back. Already in 2006, I think, we had examples where it not only looked back tens of thousands of steps, but really millions of steps. And um, Juan Perez um, Ortiz in my lab, I think was the first author of a paper where um, we really, was it 2006 or something, mm -hmm. had uh, examples where it learned to look back um, for more than 10 million steps. Wow. So. For most problems of speech recognition, it's not necessary to look that far back, but there are examples where it does. Now, the looking back thing, that's rather easy because there's only one past, but there are many possible futures. Mm. And so a reinforcement learning system, which is trying to maximize its future expected reward and doesn't know yet which of these many possible futures should I select given this one single past, is facing problems that the LSTM by itself cannot solve. So the LSTM is good for coming up with a compact representation of the history so far, of the history and of observations and actions so far. Mm -hmm. But now how do you plan in an efficient and good way among all these, how do you select one of these many possible action sequences that a reinforcement learning system has to consider to maximize reward in this unknown future? So again, we have this basic um, setup where you have one recon network, which gets in the video and the speech and whatever, and is executing actions mm -hmm. and is trying to maximize reward. So there is no teacher who tells it what to do at which point in time. And then there's the other network, which is just predicting what's going to happen if I do that and that. And that could be an LCM network. And it learns to look back all the way to make better predictions mm -hmm. of the next time step. So essentially, although it's predicting only the next time step, it is motivated to learn to put into memory something that happened maybe a million steps ago, because it's important uh, to memorize that if you want to predict that uh, at the next time step, the next event. You know? Now, um, how can a model of the world like that, a predictive model of the world, be used by the first guy? Let's call it the controller and the model, the controller and the model. How can the model be used by the controller to efficiently select among these many possible futures. The naive way we had uh, about 30 years ago was let's just use the model of the world as a stand-in, as a simulation of the world, and millisecond by millisecond we plan the future, and um, that means we have to roll it out really in detail, and it will work only if the model is really good, and it will still be inefficient because we have to look at all these possible futures, and, and there are so many of them. So instead, what we do now, since 2015, in our CM systems, controller model systems, we give the controller the opportunity to learn by itself how to use the potentially relevant parts of the M, of the model network mm -hmm. to solve new problems more quickly. And if it wants to, it can learn to ignore the M. And sometimes it's a good idea to ignore the, the M because it's really bad. It's a bad predictor in this particular um, situation of life uh, where the controller is currently trying to maximize reward. However, it can also learn to address and exploit some of the sub-programs that um, came about in the model network through compressing the data by predicting it. So it now has an opportunity to reuse that code, the algorithmic information in the model network, to reduce its own search space, such that it can solve a new problem more quickly than without the model.